Hi, my name's Mark and I'm GK Tutor and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk about multiple repetitive cycles. So unlike canned cycles, multiple repetitive cycles are used as roughing cycles to remove as much material as possible in the shortest amount of time. Where canned cycles are used to do the same action over and over, such as drilling holes. Whereas repetitive cycles, we define a shape and the machine removes the material in the most efficient way to achieve that shape. So let's take a look at some of these cycles and see how they work. I'm going to start off with my favourite one, my most used one, and probably your most used cycle as well, and that's our standard roughing cycle. So the G71 removes material along the Z axis, while indexing down in X, taking cuts in X, but the tool is travelling along the Z axis, removing material. And there's a lot to this. We can have a one-line roughing cycle or a two-line G71 roughing cycle, depending on our machine. And we're going to look into a bit more about how this works in a minute. But this is our main roughing cycle, the G71, and it works very similar to the G72. So the G72 is a facing cycle and it works the same way as our G71. The only difference is we index an in on along the Z axis, so we're taking a depth of cut on Z, but we're using the X axis to actually remove the material. So the tool will be cutting along the X axis by indexing along the Z to take a depth of cut. So the G72 is great for making short spigots. I often use it for making false centers when machining a false center on the end of the part. And our third repetitive cycle is our pattern repeating cycle. So this works slightly differently to the other two. What we're doing here is the tool follows the same pattern each cut. So this is ideal if we're cutting pre-machined billets such as castings or forgings. So this way we're not taking a lot of cuts in air, we're actually cutting the profile of the part that's already been preformed. And the information we give it using the G73 is almost identical to the G71 and the G72. And we're going to take a look at that information right now. So let's have a look over the information we need to give our roughing cycles. Now this is a two line G71 roughing cycle. It's also available in a single line and this depends on our machine controls. Some machines like the single line, some machines like the two lines. So this is the two line. So we start off each line with G71 and this lets the machine know all the information follows this is about that cycle. So along this top line here, we have U and I've given it a value of 1.0. This is our depth of cut. This is how much material is removed each pass. And that's followed by an R value. And I've also given this a value of one millimeter. Now this is our retract value. This is how far the tool moves away from the part before it rapids back to the front of the job to take the next cut. So looking at this second line here, P100Q200, this is the start and end point of our subroutine. And the subroutine is where we would program the profile of our part. Now these numbers do not have to be P100, Q200. It could be P anything you like and Q anything you like, as long as it ties in with the subroutine and it matches the subroutine. We're well, more about that in a minute. So let's move on to U and W on this line. Now this can't be confused with U on the line above. This U is the finishing allowance in X. So this is how much we want to leave on for when our finishing tool comes in and takes its final cut. So I'm allowing 0.2 of a millimeter for a finishing allowance here. And our W is our finishing allowance in Z. This is how much we're leaving on the faces during our roughing cycles. And this applies to the G71, G72 and G73 cycles. So our W here is our finishing allowance in Z. I'm just leaving on 0.0 five of a millimeter just to clean up that front edge. It'd be about two thousandths of an inch. And finally, we have our feed rate. Now where this is a lathe, this would be feed per revolution. So each revolution of the spindle, the tool would progress by 0.2 of a millimeter. Now I said I would come back to the subroutine. So here it is. So this is a section of program taken from the pattern repeating cycle, something that we may see using this, but it works the same for all the roughing cycles. So as we see at the top, we have our two line G73 cycle with our information in it. 
And after the second G73, we have our P100. Now that ties in with N100 on the program. So this could be P200, P539, as long as the N would be N539, it would call upon that N number in the program, as it knows it's the start of the subroutine. And Q200 defines the end of the subroutine with N200. And now again, this could be any number, as long as it matches the N number at the end of the subroutine. So all the information between the two N numbers would be our subroutine, and that would be the profile of our part. And the roughing cycles would follow that until it's achieved the correct sizes that we've stated in the first two lines of the cycle. Now, why do we use a subroutine? Well, one very simple answer when it comes to writing the finishing cycle, we only need to give it this information. We don't need to copy the entire profile again. We just need to tell it G70, P100, Q200, and it will go off and machine that cycle for us. We will machine that pattern. It will machine it to size, and then it will go home. We do need a little bit more information than this. We do need to change the tool, etc., and move the tool around inside the environment, safety lines, that sort of thing. But when it comes to actually profiling a part, we don't need to. We can just call upon the subroutine by using G70, P100, Q200. So that's the three main repetitive cycles we would use when it comes to roughing and finishing with a G70 there. But we do have some other cycles under our tool belt as well. We've got the G75 grooving cycle, which can be used to groove on the outside of the part. And we have a similar one for face grooving also. And we can also use this grooving cycle as a part and off cycle. And screw thread cycles are also classed as a repetitive cycle as well. And here's an example of the single line. There is also a two line version of this, the same as the other cycles. So that's just a quick overview of the few repetitive cycles I use on a daily basis. So by using repetitive cycles alongside CAN cycles, we can really use a lot less code when we're writing our programs, especially on a CNC lathe. So when we write G-code manually, we often code a lot more elegantly than a CAD CAM system would output the code.